Fashion Week Brooklyn on the show. I'm not clear or sure where they are at the moment, but um, hey, you know, sometimes these things happen. And as I was coming up the street, I was wondering to myself, I wonder if this happens to Oprah. <laughs> no, this does not happen to Oprah because people save their lives trying to get on the Oprah show. And when Oprah calls, I don't care if you are on your deathbed, you get up. You make yourself well, and you get to that damn studio. <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, or fortunately, fortunately, I am me, and I'm not Oprah. And so, you know, people screw up. But one day, they will, I will rue the day. <laughs> and people will get up out of their deathbeds to be on my show as well. So I, I look forward to that. I do seriously look forward to that day. So the show was going to be based around um, sustainability. You know, I'm just going to keep moving, right? Sustainability, right? So what I wanted to know from them what sustainability is, because I know that it's become this really big thing now in our society. We're trying to actually cut down on, hey, J. Rue, we're trying to cut down. I don't know if we really are trying to cut down, but I think that uh, the millennials um, are not as gluttonous as uh, prior uh, eras, right? Um, they're trying to use the resources that we already have. Um, and so I wanted to know about sustainability inside of fashion, even though my sister said that was a really boring conversation. I don't think it's a boring conversation. I think um, trying to sustain life on this planet in the most economical but yet creative way is a new opportunity for each and every one of us to like do our part, right? It's like in my community, sustainability means um, buy nothing on Facebook.com, right? And so what that looks like is um, people have a lot of things in their house and Ma Marie Kondo, who is um, helping people clear clutter, has really made an impact on um, the way we are now living our lives. We're becoming clutter-free. You know, like in America, we do things in en masse, right? All of a sudden, it's this clutter-free conversation. Let me see if that's them. No, it's not them, but let me put myself on silent here. Um, so what everybody's doing is they're clearing out their pantries, they're clearing out their closets, they're clearing out their cluttered apartments. I got rid of my couch that I had, but I had my couch for like 25 years. So anyway, on Buy Nothing, um, Buy Nothing, Brook, uh, Buy Nothing on Facebook is Brooklyn based and it's a, it's a project that is all over the country where if you have things in your house that you are no longer using, you put it online, you share it with the community, and the first one that gets it is got it, right? Like, so I've given up things on it. Like, um, in my building, we have a tendency of throwing out um, electronics. We have an a, a automatic electronics pickup, but there are certain things they don't pick up, like uh, like printers and things. I've given away four good quality printers whereby you know you buy a printer and you think oh it's a really good price but you realize it's like a razor blade you need the blades right you need the ink the ink is where they get you so you might buy a printer for $99 200 or you might buy a really expensive printer what you get on sale for nothing but you have to um, buy the ink so the inks could be the cost of the printer and so people realize that and they're like hell with that shit and they throw the printer out so I've been able to give those printers away and those things go really fast. I've been able to give away um, uh, uh, com like lots of computer, computer components, lots of telephones, lots of all kinds of stuff I've been able to give. And it's usually within 45 minutes to a day, air conditioners, it's gone. And people really, and so what I've gotten off of it, I wanted a set of white curtains. Somebody was giving away a set of white curtains. I got them. I needed a juicer. Somebody was giving away a juicer. I got that. Somebody was giving away, giving away a steamer, like a floor steamer, which was a shock. I wanted one of those, but I didn't want to spend the money to get it. And I got a brand new shock online with better than the one I knew, you know, better than the one I wanted, right? Which this one, I can also steam my clothes. And it has all these different components. So, you know, sustainability um, is where you have, because, you know, we live in America. 
things are always on sale. We have an overabundance of things. We have an overabundance of electronics. And I also wonder what happens to those electronics once they meet the landfill. Do they really recycle these things, right? I mean, like, where do these things go? Like, they, it's not like when I was a little kid and my mother said, clean your room, and, and I would sweep the carpet and put the dirt underneath the carpet. <laughs> right it didn't disappear the dirt just got bigger and bigger and then finally the door couldn't open right so it's like you have to put the trash out really but where does this stuff go does it get recycled well there's a whole huge movement on um um recycling things and uh i have a friend uh stephanie benedetto who was on the show when i first started she has won so many awards um, for sustainability. It was sustainability when she started with, um, with um, fashion and clothes and materials. Now she's doing cardboards. Now she's going into um, like the car manufacturers because they have an abundance of tires and wheels and rubber and, you know, doodads and gadgets and all kinds of stuff where she's now actually, hi, EC. She's now actually um, recycling all of that stuff. So her business, she's won so many awards. She's won a WeWork award. She's won an award from Cheddar. You know, she's done all kinds of things pertaining to uh, sustainability. Had I known that my people were not going to show up, I could have had her on the show on this thing. But what are your thoughts about sustainability? You know, um, we don't really see it per se, we don't really see how much trash we use because we're not putting it out. If you live in a building, you're not putting out the trash. You don't get to see how much trash, literally, I saw it today, how much trash our roving super has to take out. It's bottles and bottles and bottles and bags and bags and bags of plastics. And what I usually do is if you see, I usually see those people that are, um, walking down the street that are collecting bottles and cans and stuff like that. And so on a particular day when we where all the trash is bagged up, I usually invite them to come into the backyard and take all the bottles and cans. I know it's weird. I mean, who does that? But like, it's my little bit. It's my little bit that I can do consciously or unconsciously. But it's also what I'm thinking about with these people is that you see them in the streets in New York gathering bottles and cans and, and I've actually met a woman that paid her mortgage with that. You know, on Saturday, I met a guy that had so, no, Sunday, actually, Sunday night. I met a guy that had so many bags and I'm like, wow, you've been really busy. And he goes, yeah, I've been at it. He goes, I do it like three days a week. It's a little extra money for myself. He goes, it's out there for everyone to do. And he wasn't homeless and he wasn't a bum or anything like that. It's just an individual that found a way to make some extra cash to make some extra cash um, recycling our trash, you know? So so what I do is I usually just invite whoever I see coming in um, to come and get the trash. It's there, you know, they walk away with two, three big giant bag fulls of garbage and, and it's less time on their hands having to troll the streets and troll garbage cans. So th that's a little bit of sustainability that I do. And um, one of the other areas how I take on sustainability is that I wear my clothes until they're actually dead. Like I literally, you know, I, one, I only buy what I like. Two, I wear it until it's literally dead. People say, why don't you give it to Goodwill? Seriously, somebody going into Goodwill, not unless they're going to be in a play and they need my rags, they're not going to buy my clothes. So, uh, you know, I, I generally uh, give them away. And then I also buy, I don't buy a lot of, things i usually this this uh facebook buy nothing facebook who i've given it to a million people um that helps me cut down because i also look and see what's going on with that and then also what i do is i um i like thrift i like to buy thrift clothes and um so i'll do that but um that's a little bit of what i do when it comes to um sustainability so i'm wondering where these people are I know that Rick is probably going to go, oh, my God. Uh, you know, I screwed up. So anyway, we did confirm, but what can I say? This, it happens. So how much more can I talk about sustainability? What's going to pop into my head about sustainability? I cannot tell. I don't know for now. But um, 
We've got Jay R Ryu on the line, and we've got EC Paulo. Paulo. And EC, he's from Brazil. He's a new listener from Brazil. So thank you so much for um, joining me on this call. And can somebody get me a tissue? That's my new catchphrase. Can somebody get me a tissue? I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so what else can I talk about? So, oh, yes. So here's the thing. There's another thing I discovered, and I discovered this um, quite some years ago. What happens with, um, thank you so much. What happens with um, uh, clothes, right? So, you know, a lot of the clothes that don't get sold by manufacturers end up in the Goodwill. A lot of the clothes that we, uh, that if they don't go to Goodwill, what they do is they ship them to third world countries, right? How do I know this? Because when I was in Senegal a few years ago, a good many years ago, I met um, a friend of mine who became, a guy who became a friend of mine, and he um, got his clothes um, from what, I don't know, what, it, was, it wasn't called Goodwill, but it was an organization. And he said what he liked about that organization was that they had really good clothes. Come to find out, he was wearing things like Gap. He was wearing all like the fact Banana Republic. He was with all of these different organizations. He had those clothes because what happens is they ship that stuff out to third world countries. They get, I think they get probably a tax write off or they get some kind of write off. But they're literally what they're dump, doing is dumping the clothes in third world countries, right? So now I thought about that for a second. I thought like if they could dump that much clothes or that many clothes in a third world country, you know that they're paying peanuts, absolutely like peanuts, maybe not even a peanut, maybe shells of a peanut for the price of to get those clothes made and manufactured, right? Um, and then what they do is they ship the, the what can't be sold or what, you know, what's not working in the marketplace, they ship it to these third world countries. And so when I also was in Haiti, they have, Haiti has so much of our garbage clothes in that country. They, this one thing they don't need anymore in Haiti is our cast offs. They really don't. So I'm going to make this thing work tonight. We're going to talk about sustainability and I'm going to pull it out some, somewhere. I don't know where that somewhere will be, but I'm going to pull it out. I'll talk to you in a few minutes. Bye-bye. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you stuck in a rut? Negative thoughts, feelings, and conversations got you down? Hi, I'm Noreen Sumter, the Potentiator. Tune in every Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time and listen for new ideas on my show, Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, on talkradio.nyc. Who do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow, Follow Me Friday, Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're, We're your digital, digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> Talking Alternative Radio. 24 hours a day. So we're back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, and we're talking about sustainability. Unfortunately, my guest tonight did not show up, has not shown up, 
I don't know, probably spaced. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows the secret of the black magic box? <laughs> that black magic box used to be a chocolate. It was a chocolate company in England and they had the best commercials. They had commercials where it featured like somebody like James Bond and he would get a box of chocolate, the back magic box, and he would race through and he would run through thunderstorms and climb mountains and jump out of a plane to deliver the black magic box to the woman. And he would leave the chocolates on her dresser or on her bed and she would open it and pop a chocolate. What has that got to do with fashion? Nothing. But I just said the black magic box. It brought me back to my childhood, thinking of the James Bond type man delivering me chocolates. But I can't do that now because I got diabetes. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're talking about sustainability. And there's all kinds of sustainability stuff. It's a multi-million billion dollar industry, right? And there are numerous reasons and numerous ways that companies are, hi, companies are recycling. And um, I had, I cannot remember the name of the, um, hi, Anna, how are you? How do you recycle? How do you sustain? Um, there was a, a couple that I had that came on the show last year. Cro-Magnum, Cro-Magnum, that was the name of their company. And they made clothes, amazing clothes, absolutely amazing clothes that were made out of bottles, plastic bottles. So it was like silky type tops and um, there were silky type tops and really nice linen like uh, uh, pants and amazing jacket and all jackets and all this stuff was like waterproof and it was just absolutely amazing right and so that's how she had trained to be a um, doctor but hated it absolutely hated it and left the medical institution at the chagrin of her parents and went into fashion in a sustainable way using the biology that she had learned while she was studying medicine I think it's a noble cause what she's doing. Medicine's great too, but if you don't like it, don't do it, right? So you use Rent the Runway. I used to use Rent the Runway, but I have a secret I have to tell you, and I actually learned it on the show. Rent the Runway. Tell them I said hello. Rent the Runway. They are the largest consumers of um, dry cleaning products. See if I'm right with that. Check that out. They use, um, because you are renting the runway, they can't very well put it back on the shelf with your stinky armpit sweat in it. So they have to dry clean it. Whether you wore it or not, they have to dry clean it, I guess, for health and sanitary reasons. And so what they are is they're a large purveyor and user of water and detergents. So I stopped using them, actually. And... Uh, and what I did do, because I used to use Rent the Runway, and, you know, the, the organization is in a great organization. It's really awesome for women and things like that. And it's a personal preference. Um, if I'm going to, you know, I was choosing Rent the Runway as a way to be sustainable, maintain my closet, and don't I have to go out there and buy a thousand pieces of clothing to go to an event. And what I, you know, I just didn't want to be a contribution to that part of um, the process. So I opted out of wearing Rent the Runway. And now they're cheaper. You can do Rent the Runway for 150 bucks for the month. And you can wear, um, you can get four items at a time and you can use it. Now, I know a lot of people do use it, especially a lot of professional women that do a lot of traveling or, or, or need to change up their gear. A lot of realtors use it, actually. But um, no, no slight on you. Do what works for you. But for me, you know, I was thinking about, I don't have any children, but my friends have children and there are children around. I was thinking of water and detergents and all that stuff in, you know, backing up the system for years to come. So I opted out of that arena. We have, um, I just heard about Freaks, Free Cycle, which is, um, which is an organization where you can get free stuff. And then there's also, which I haven't been, but I know people that have been, is the Buffalo Exchange, right? Um, and this is where you take, you can take your clothes and people buy them for a small amount of money. Um, what else is there? Um, um, okay, there's also what people are doing are clothing swaps. You know, people are um, 
doing clothing swaps of a group of women. I've never heard of men doing this kind of stuff though, but women getting together because you know the closets are packed to the brim, right? Mine isn't though. I'm like Victorian. I've got my clothes in a trunk. <laughs> yeah, I put my dresses in a trunk. And, and um, I've got a few that I'm using inside the closet and the rest of them go in the trunk. Um, yeah, so what they do is they get together with a few women and they swap shoes and clothes and um, they do this regularly and it helps people to, to maintain economics, cut down on spending on clothes. And it also helps you to empty out your closets where you have things that you're not wearing. And I know people get uh, addicted to, and I've been to friends' houses where they have clothes that they bought like a few years ago and they still have the tags on them. I have a friend who was seriously addicted to shoes. She had a shoe addiction. Like she loved shoes and she literally had a shoe addiction. She had every designer shoe that you can imagine in her closet. And the killer part is she didn't wear them. They were just boxes and boxes and boxes of shoes in her closet that she did not wear. So, you know, um, but now I think she's healed. She's not wearing the shoes, but she hasn't been buying as many shoes as she used to. So what else can I say? What else? What else have we researched in the area of Posh? Po oh, yes. Poshmark. Yes. Poshmark is another um, form of sustainability. Um, whereby um, you can put your things, your your clothing. I bought glasses on Poshmark and I screwed up because the glasses that I bought, they were like 1970s. There were some 60s ones. But however, they couldn't fit my big face. <laughs> they couldn't fit. The glasses couldn't fit and it, they were prescription, but they couldn't fit because they were too small. So now I have to either put them back on Poshmark or give them to some friends. I have a friend that I can give them to. Um, so Poshmark is one of the, one of them. What else? I, who? What is Depop? Oh, it's a thrifty pop. It's what, is it like vintage? Oh, and then you got Etsy as well. Cause Etsy has a lot of stuff. So this, I mean, literally, I'm sure if we as human beings put our clothes around the planet, it could probably go around the planet. How many times? Have a look at that. See how many times the amount of clothes that we have as a world, if we put it around the planet, how many times could it go around the planet? If we pinned them all together, how many times could it go around the planet? Oh, H&M is doing something good. They're accepting old clothes. So like, what's the exchange process? So if you've got old clothes, uh, huh? You give it to them give you a coupon for shopping. Well, you know what? To be quite honest, H&M's clothes, no disrespect, no disrespect, but H&M is, I don't know, we had an H&M in London when I was growing up on Regent Street, and I would go to Regent Street and I would buy clothes at H&M, and it was called Henny's at the time, and I guess that's why they've got H&M now, but it was called Henny's, right, and um, the clothes were such good quality, like, so I remember buying a pair of culottes that I literally wore, they were like khaki color, they had lots of straps on them. And uh, does everybody know what culottes are? They're like, it's like a pants skirt. It's a pair of pants and it has a pleat in the front that makes it look like a skirt. They were the hottest thing and they were really great, right? Um, I guess you guys would call them um, a skort. A, sc a skort. Yeah, that's horrible, that name. I, I'd rather culottes. It's more sophisticated. Um, yeah, so uh, the clothes were really good quality. And when they came to, now that they are um, mass, what would I call them? They are, bar no, it's not bargain. It's, it's, it's really expen inexpensive clothing. The quality is really inexpensive too. And so a couple of washes for me with something from H&M, which I don't buy also because the, I don't feel that they treat their, workers right and most of their work is a third world and you're stuck between a rock and a hard place right third world workers cheap clothes cheap wages so that we in the west can have fashion right um i don't buy their clothes anymore but you know i'm glad that they're doing something which is taking their old clothes back and recycling them because they actually dump 
a lot of clothing in the um, ocean. They also dump a lot of clothing, clothing in, can you double check that? Um, they dump a lot of clothing in the ocean and they bury a lot of clothing and they burn a lot of clothing. Also, the sustainability, even though we might be um, helping, um, you know, uh, small farm women and farmers and, and artisans and stuff like that, a lot of this, um, these to make clothes, there's a lot of dyes involved, right? There's a lot of waste water involved. There's a lot of, you know, in, in countries that don't have our kinds of regulations, there's a lot of dumping of stuff in sewers, into the waste pipe, into the rivers, and it's affecting people. So there's a lot of background stuff, you know, and I'm not an expert on this. I'm like just kind of like talking about the things that I know because my guests who do know about this stuff did not show up. And I'm sure this is not the route that they would have taken. But what I do know is that a lot of uh, these third world countries or countries, I hate to say third world because a lot of them were first world. Um, a lot of these countries uh, don't have as many protections and laws like we do in the United States. And so um, rivers and streams and estuaries and all of these, you know, food sources and soil and are being impacted by um, us. I'm, I'm, and I, when I say us, the big business makers who are creating the clothing, it's being, a, you know, the communities, it's like, a, like I said, it's stuck between a rock and a hard place because it, it's work, money, to feed your family, but some of these conditions are deplorable, you know, and, uh, you know, so what do you, what do we do? What do we do? I think we have enough clothes, don't you? I think we have enough clothes as a world um, that we don't really, I don't think we never ever need to make another dress or another pair of pants ever again, really, if we were being, res <laughs> somebody will punch me in my face for that, but if we were being really truly responsible, I'm talking about in the future, our children's 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 children. We'd never have to make another pair of clothing, right? And here's another thing that um, there's a a a, uh, a glut of children's clothes. Oh my god! And there's a glut of baby clothes, right? Um, they have uh, baby's clothes. Like when a baby is born, it has like this onesie thing, right? That they put on. So the onesie thing is, I would say. You need it for like a minute because in a couple of days, the baby is fatter, bigger, and needs the next size up. And then in, in a month or two, they need the next size up. And in a month or three, they need the next size up. So really, unless you're like just really disgustingly filthy and you just really, your baby is rolling around at two weeks old in mud and dirt and slime, those clothes are still pretty good because you rinse. I know mothers do a lot of washing for their babies and they wash their clothes and make sure they're safe. And, you know, by the time the baby gets to like two weeks old, he can't fit that thing anymore. So it's like dolly clothes, right? They're like this big. So on this um, site that I know called, on the site that I talked about, which is buynothing.com, they're always giving away a lot of baby clothes, right? Bags and bags of baby clothes. And what's so cool about it too today is that those baby clothes are um, genderless. A lot of people are buying genderless baby clothes. You know, I had a, happened to have a conversation, I think two weeks ago when I was back from um, the, coming back from the radio show tonight, um, and I met this woman who was pregnant, and I was telling her about buynothing.com. And clearly, you know, it's her first baby. I've never had a baby. I don't know what that feeling is like. You want to provide your baby with, you know, with this head on. I'm like, my baby will be wearing used clothes until it's 100, right? And so um, I said, oh, you can go onto this site. You know, you don't have to spend a lot of money in getting a uh, baby. What are those baby booster seats where you put the baby in so you can drive in a car? Those things are like a dime a dozen because everybody has to, you have to have one coming out the hospital, right? And there are so many of those things available on the site. And there's so many of those things available. You never really have to spend any money. But she said that, oh, she said, I know, but it's my first baby. I want all new things. So I fully understand where she's coming from. But, you know, if you're talking sustainability and being responsible so that the baby can grow up and have a glass of clean water, um, 
maybe we should all recycle. I'll be right back with more sustainability. Bye. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. How am I doing? How am I doing so far? So we're, this is Noreen Sumter. I'm supposed to have a sustainability um, conversation tonight with some experts. But unfortunately, the experts are not here. So you have me. And you know what I was just saying to, um, saying to Sam that it's a good job I read a lot of, you know, something about nothing all the time because like seriously like to do this show you know here's the thing what i've noticed in just you know going off topic for a hot second because i can right um i've had people ask me about doing a show right how do you do your show and i say well i plan i invite i inquire i do a lot of stuff to to make this show happen right and but most of all is i work on being consistent Right. And they're like, hi, Madeline, how are you? And they're like, well, how do you do it? And I says, well, you know, you just work at it. And so you have to, you know, you have to plan and you have to you have to plan for the show. But you also have to. Well, I don't plan for things to not happen. But what I'm learning in doing this show, because I'm not Oprah and I don't have a big team and people not dying to get on my show and would leave their deathbed or tell death to hang out for one couple of hours so they can be on the show with Oprah. I'm not that, right? Is that I have to be able to communicate and speak about and be engaged and engaging in a topic and, you know, pull out, literally pull out as much as I can so that I can carry on the conversation or make stuff make sense. Now, I am not a sustainability expert, but I'm a human being on this planet that has eyes and ears and, you know, opinions. And what I'm actually doing is stringing together what I've seen, my part, my role, and it's actually making me present to the things that, that I am, you know, a sustainable person. I, you know, I recycle as much as I can. It gets on my bloody nerves, but I do it, right? Um, I don't drop litter, I pay attention. I want to know what's going on in the world. I want to know what happens to all these clothes. They don't just disappear in a vacuum. Or maybe there is a big vacuum somewhere that's hovering above us and it's filled with our used clothes or our unsold clothes. But there has to be a place for these things, right? There has to be a place for these things. And, like, really, are we... I mean, when do, we, when do we know that enough is enough? When do we know that we have enough clothing? Because I have enough clothing. I think I have enough clothing right now to last me at least three, three years, right? Um, we only use 20% of the clothes that we uh, buy, right? Like I decided when um, Lord & Taylor was going, out, going on sale that I was going to buy a few gowns. And I bought those gowns because I'll be going to some events and stuff. But if you're a person that you're going to go to the, the, any events with me, you might see these gowns for the next 10 years. <laughs> right? I had one gown that I bought um, for a friend's wedding. And I swear to God, that is the wedding gown. That is the gown that goes to everybody's wedding. 
or everybody's event. And I will even lend it to a friend because I'm, I just wasn't going to go out and buy a whole bunch of gowns. And the truth of the matter, the only person that or the only people that would notice that I've worn it multiple toy times and would say something about it are haters. Right. People who are just like really bitchy. Like I have a, do have a couple of bitchy friends who would probably say you wearing that thing again. I'll be like, yeah, mind your business. You know, but the thing about it is like, I don't have to go out there that, you know, when you're young, you go out and you buy clothes every week, right? When I was 13, I wanted clothes every week. I couldn't have them. So I made clothes, right? And then when I got my own money, I did buy clothes frequently, not every week, but frequently, right? But now it's like, it's, it's been a while. I, I just got this thing. I don't really like shopping and I never really did. I did it as a necessity and because I had to, but I really didn't like it. And so now I have like a bunch of gowns, which literally I'll be wearing them until they wear out. I'll be wearing that pink sequined gown until the sequins pop off, right? I don't really care. Cause you know what the truth of the matter? Nobody really notices. Nobody really notices because they're too worried about how they look. So it's like, who cares, you know? So I, if you can find a way to be sustainable, hey, Ryan, how are you? How do you do sustainability? How do you contribute to um, the environment when it comes to clothes and stuff? Are you a big shopper? Do you shop all the time? Do you um, have a closet bursting at the seams whereby, you know, things you're not wearing anymore? How do you get rid of them? Do you give them to goodwill? Do you throw them in the garbage? What do you do? How do you do it? And Madeline, the same with you. What do you do? With that, me, I've got a bunch of gowns. Those gowns will fit me from now to doomsday. And what's good about it is that I'm not getting any fatter where they're not. And you know what? I don't really care because I will put that dress on and look like a sausage roll, but I will be one sexy sausage roll, right? But um, I'm getting thinner, so they'll fit for quite some time. But um, yeah, I, I have them and I'm happy with that. Now we have um, Norse Face. Oh, so we have a lot of companies today that are taking their crap back, right? Which is great because what do they do with the crap? I mean, is it a ploy to, yeah, they recycle it, I'm sure. Because fabrics can also be broken down, um, dyed, made back into yarns and recreated, recycled in that way, which I think is really interesting. Um, so North Face takes stuff back. Um, and they take clothes and shoes. Yeah, I know North Face. No, yeah. Timberland also takes shoes back. Timberland shoes are guaranteed. So if you ever go to the thrift shop and you, or you find Timberlands walking down the street, you can always send them back to Timberland. They'll send you a new pair. Um, Planet Aid, Yellow Collect, le Collective Bins for Resources. Um, what's that? Earth 911. Oh, they'll send a bin, they'll bring a bin to your building. The, one of them has yellow bins around the city. Right. The other one, Earth 911, is a bunch of resources. Right. Also, the, you know, at the market, the, um, these, the, what? Okay. So, uh, Earth 911 has a bunch of resources that people can um, use to um, recycle, upcycle, and be sustainable. Um, also, at the, those markets, the uh, farmer's markets, they have, not only do they compost, I don't compost, it's so nasty, it's disgusting. <laughs> but somebody's got to do it. I like the soil that comes out of it though. Hey, Red Cherry, how are you? Um, yes, so they're at the farmer's market in Brooklyn on Saturdays, you can give them your old clothes. What they do is they break it down and recycle them and do stuff with it. God only knows, they don't eat it. And then also you can compost. Composting is something I grew up with knowing from England, my mother used to compost and um, composting at the farmer's market in Brooklyn near Washington Park on Saturdays, I'm always fascinated with the live stuff growing out of it, like the myriads of worms and maggots and creepy crawlies coming out of there. I like taking pictures because it actually looks like artwork. It's disgusting but it does look like, it looks like artwork to me because it's alive, right? Um, so yeah, there's so many different ways that you can contribute to being sustainable in, in on this planet, in the neighborhood in New York. You know, um, 
yeah, you know, do your little bit, whatever that bit is for yourself. I give plastic bottles to my neighbors. I um, wear my clothes to death um, and then put it in the, in the sustainable trash basket so they can recycle them. Um, people are doing clothing drives. Women are doing swaps. What are the men doing? Because I guess men, some men, have so few clothes except for one friend I know who will remain nameless. This man has so many clothes and he has so many clothes because he also wears dresses but not like dresses like flowy dresses but like he will wear um like a caftan type thing but like a caftan type looking but it's literally it is a dress right but he'll wear that so imagine his closet he has a closet huge filled out closet but he also has um storage bins, storage containers, whereby he has um, two storage containers filled with clothes. So he might put his winter clothes away now so that he can wear his summer clothes, right? But this man has more clothes than most women I know. And that's a lot of clothes because I know women with a lot of clothes, right? Um, yeah, so what do you do? What do you do with your clothes? Um, Nike, mm, Nike collects old athletic shoes. So that's good. Um, Patagon, Patagonia, a sex, a sold Patagonia clothes, but Patagonia has a whole, their clothes, people want their clothes. Like people want their old jackets and their old, people want that stuff. So I can really understand that. Hi, Lincoln Lloyd Mighty. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. What do you do with um, your clothes? What do you do with clothes that you are no longer wearing? I know a lot of people ship their clothes out if they like have family in third world countries and stuff. They will put together some kind of barrel or some kind of package and send it out. I have a friend that well, he's not a friend, he's a guy from the coffee shop. Anybody that's in the coffee shop on Clinton between Myrtleland Park, Connecticut, Muffin, shout out, they're a friend, right? Um, it's just easier to say it. And they, um, he takes, he collects things like um, baby carriages, I call them prams. He collects baby car seats, shoes, all kinds of stuff, and he ships it back to Africa. And then when he takes it back to Africa, um, he says that our, what we would consider crap, is not crap back there, right? Um, what else? So most of these companies, when you take your things back to them, their, your clothes, they will give you a coupon. It's good to know. Billy Jeans, uh, gogreen.org, to recycle denim made from cotton. You know, th so there's a lot of things happening. Um, I know they're using um, old jeans to make insulation for housing. So there's a lot of things that we can use our recycled clothes for. That's exactly what I do. I, sh I ship them home. Yes, that's, that's really good. So we have one more minute. This is it. Last, we're done, right? Oh, we have one more segment. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Best designs for your life start at home. I'm David Thiergartner, interior designer and host of At Home. Listen live Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time as we talk to the very best professionals about interior design and the design that's all around us right here on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com
And we're back. We're in the final leg. You know what? You just got to do what, I, listen, I just got to do what I got to do. And you got to do what you got to do. And life is perfect inside of all its imperfections, right? It's like, you know, they say that um, man plans and God laughs, right? And, you know, we make our plans and we do what we do and, and circumstances come up and, you know, but you just got to keep going. And, and that's why I always say to people, it's really important to do what you love. It is critical that you do what you love and you do what you're passionate about. But here's the thing with passion. Passion is the ticket. It's just the ticket. But you got the ticket, then now you have to use the ticket to go ride, right? Which is, you got to use the ticket to technically get on the bus, right? And that is executing. You got to execute. A lot of people have passion, but they don't have execution. I have passion. I have execution. But but I I have this thing that I'm led by my passions, and and so it's just an automatic that I'm gonna execute, right? And so it was brought to my attention that Noreen, not only do you have passion, not only do you have ideas, you execute, right? And that's a a, a difference between a lot of people that have passions but don't execute and have reasons why they don't. So. For me, you know, coming on this show, I was I nervous? No. I, you know, did they show when they showed up? Was I disappointed? Yeah, was disappointed. But like, am I not gonna do the show because they didn't show up? Even if I was on primetime TV, like where there were millions of people, I wouldn't cancel the show. I mean, we'd probably have a backup because I got a team, but at the end of the day, one has to flip that in, that educational or flip that switch in your mind so that you can get in, you know, remain in the game. So I'm on the last leg of this show. This is, you know, everything for me is a learning experience. These people didn't show. What am I going to do? How am I going to do this? I don't know. But you know what? I do know that I got a show to do. I got to complete. And uh, this is it. Right. So one of the things that we Sam and I just talked about, and Sam is the owner of the studio, and he was telling me about plastic bottles. We are all recycling our plastic bottles. However, which I didn't know this, if you're recycling plastic bottles and or paper and they have been contaminated, i.e. that coffee spot, the coffee spot, you know, like you might, I got this binder and I, I maybe I put the coffee on there and the, and the, I get a coffee ring. That is not recyclable because it's been contaminated. Now, I'm sure they're allowed to have, as he says, a certain amount of contaminants in the recycling process, right? So they can have a certain amount of dirty bottles. However, they can't have a mass amount of dirty bottles. So if you're recycling and, um, you want to really make a difference, you got to wash your bottles, right? And the blue plastic bags have got to be clean. Else everything's good. So it's like if we don't recycle or they don't make the recycling, if we don't recycle properly, i.e. clean products, clean paper, you know, you can have paper with writing on it, but just not paper with shit like our food or greasy grease stains or markers or whatever. Because the machine, I'm sure the machine can read some, but it can't read it all, Right. So we have to make an extra effort to clean, to, to recycle clean bottles and paper. You know, when I, I've been to a couple of third world countries and what I noticed and experienced was that people were burning plastics, right? People were burning plastics. And I was like, why are you burning the plastics? Well, that's how they felt they could get rid of it right? But that is the worst thing that you can actually do because the toxins that's coming out of it, you're inhaling that. The toxins are going into the air. They're impacting your whole environment, right? So burning of plastics and things, not good. So if you know anybody who lives in a third world country and is burning plastics like your family member, please let them know that they can't do that or support them in not doing that. You never want to tell people what they can't do, but you want to support them in what's good and healthy for them. Um, I also read an article many years ago about this um, um, American woman that moved to Indonesia and she had a uh, maid, a, a baby baby nanny, nanny, and she had um, maids and stuff like that. 
you know, because in those countries, if you're American or Westerner, your money is a lot stronger than their local currency. So you can afford a lot of things that, um, you know, ordinary folks wouldn't be able to afford, right? And she said that, you know, she had baby pampers and things like that. And <clears throat> the baby pamper that she used in her house, she saw them on the corner of some street in her neighborhood where they had been dumped. Shit and all, right? Baby pampers with shit and everything. So in, in that, so you imagine like how many diapers, I don't know how many diapers. Do you know how many diapers people go through in the first year of baby life? until the baby is potty trained. Can you look that up, right? So I'm saying hundreds and hundreds, right, right of diapers. Because what, you change the baby every two hours? I don't know, I, 20 minutes. In my case, it probably over three hours when I had my nephew. They were like, did you change his diaper? I said, oopsie, no, you didn't cry, so. And then I looked in there, it was disgusting. <laughs> I wouldn't think, and well, I, you know, well, having a baby, you have to learn, right? So anyway, um, yeah, cloth diapers. I know it's a lot of work, but it was better for the environment because those diapers, they have the plastic and they have the thing and the thing and the thing. I'm sure if I was using um, paper diapers when I was around, they'd still be alive on this planet. Like, so if you're, if you're what, 40 or 30 and your first diaper was 30 years ago, trust me, that thing is probably still in some landfill, hasn't broken down. So you know, I'm not telling people what to do, but, you know, these are some of the things that we might consider um, supporting our friends. Get them a diaper service, right? Get a diaper service, get cloth diapers and get them a diaper service. I don't know, but it's a possibility. Um, so clean bottles, clean paper so that they, we don't contaminate. You know, disposable diapers. Oh, the, even, think about this. Sanitary napkins and panty liners, gazillions of those, right? Because you use those for the rest of your life. You can use those for the rest of your lives, right? So there's a lot. Did you find it? Oh, yes. So here's the number, 3,000. 3,000 diapers at the beginning of the 50... 3,000 diapers at the first year of a baby's life is what we need. 3,000 diapers. 3,000 diapers for the first year going into a land film. Fill. With poopy in it. Not breaking down. Kind of rough. Kind of scary. There's fish out there that are eating diapers. I am not kidding. There's fish out there that is actually being suffocated by a diaper. There are fish out there that's being suffocated by the plastics. There's an island, I cannot remember where, if it's in the Pacific, but there's an island that's like, I, I'm, don't quote me, like 20 miles long of garbage, of plastics, right? But there was one good thing out of the garbage and the plastics. There was this guy that was living in the Caribbean island somewhere, don't know which one, or a Latin American island, and he actually made himself an, a floating island of garbage. Well, not garbage, plastics, where he actually created like a, an island and he actually lives on top of it because he built a house out of all the plastics that. And that was his way of being a contribution and getting the plastics out of the water. He created a space to live on right so the way the homeless situation is going in new york city people might be collecting their plastics <laughs> i'm not joking i'm freaking serious they probably can collect uh, you could probably make housing out of plastic yeah you could be, oh i actually have seen that where people have used um plastic bottles generally in warm climates where they fill it with rocks and or sand and then they put it as a brick um, between with cement and stuff like that and they've made homes out of it and they're quite attractive you know there's a lot of really secondary third kind of things that we can do with um with the resources that we have there is enough resources on this planet for each and every single one of us you know it, but it's just the distribution and it's also information so i just want to thank you all um what is lincoln might he say 50 years ago 
uh, it used to be cloth diapers, absolutely. Absolutely, and there was plenty of washing and plenty of boiling. Quite disgusting, really, when you think about it. But convenience is not always the best way. But anyway, this is Noreen Sumter doing her best to uh, talk about sustainability. And um, I hope that you enjoy this show. I absolutely enjoyed you know, pouring through the annuals of my mind and seeing where I can find the information to share. So I thank you for your time. I thank you for your energy and being with me on the show. I look forward to um, seeing you again next week and my guest will show up. Have a, otherwise, we'll do it again. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great week. This is Noreen Sumter signing off on Beyond Potential. Live life your way. Bye. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network.